Today's video is going to show you how to add a MOSFET to your heated bed for your 3D printer. So, stay tuned. Okay, so on this particular machine, I've already printed off one of the brackets from the product page. This is the one that has the two parts where it's got the top housing that clips on. The MOSFET itself will be secured to the printer with four M3 screws into the mount here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that now. One thing to note before we go any further is make sure you set this jumper to the voltage for your printer. So this is a 12 volt machine, so I have the jumper set to 12 volts. If you had a 24, you just take this little jumper off, move it over to 24, and you're ready to rock and roll. But since I'm using a 12 volt printer, I'm going to go ahead and leave it on 12. This MOSFET sits into the mount. There's screw heads on the back of the MOSFET, and that just lines up into there. So I'm going to go ahead and secure this now. So now I have the MOSFET secured. We see you have this little pigtail wires here. If I unplug this here, you'll see that these are labeled B, C, T, L, and S, G, N, D. This top port is for when you are directly interfacing with an I.O. pin on your board, meaning one of these spare pins and not using this to bypass an existing MOSFET. Since we're going to go to the existing bed output on this board, we're going to connect this to BCTL. This header is not polarity sensitive, and now we're going to hook this up to the, the existing bed output on our board. So on this particular board, these are the pins that go to my heated bed, so I'm going to unscrew these two and pull these out of the terminals. So I have my two stock wires that go to the bed and these two wires coming from the MOSFET will go to where the bed connected. Again, these are not polarity sensitive when hooking it up like this. Just make sure to strip your wires before inserting them. Once you've stripped your wires, go ahead and twist them. There's a lot going on here, so I'm going to disconnect some things so I can get easier access to these terminals here. So now with all my other wires out of the way, I can easily get to these terminals and just put these in and tighten them down, make sure they're snug. And now I'm going to reconnect the stuff I disconnected. So now I have my control wire ran to my printer stock MOSFET. And the next thing to do is to connect the bed to the hotbed output and then we need to run a new set of wires from power to our power supply. Now if your printer is like mine where you have existing ends on here you're going to want to remove these and strip the wires. Also if your heated bed stock wiring has tinned wires on the ends clip those off and strip them because these screw terminals are designed for bare wires because it can create hot spots. So the next thing to do is unscrew these As you screw or unscrew these, you can see the terminal moves up when you go clockwise and down when you go counterclockwise. So I've already opened up these two here, so they're ready to accept my wires. And again, these are labeled plus and negative, so if you're really anal, you can go ahead and make sure red goes to the top and black goes to the bottom. But because it's a heated bed, it does not matter. So go ahead and Hold the wire in place. Make sure you get the wires in the little terminal holes there. And then tighten down the screws. So now we have our heated bed wires connected here. and We just have to run power from here to our power supply. And this is polarity sensitive. So you have to make sure this goes to positive and this goes to negative. I made a little cable here out of 12 gauge silicone. You can use 12, 14, 16, it really depends on your bed. We actually have in our shop for the Ender 3, this one meter replacement cable with these ends already pre-crimped on. So if you want an extra power cable, if you're installing the MOSFET, you can pick this up in our shop and this is actual silicone wire. So I'm going to run this end with the crimped ends on to my power supply and then run the other ends that do not have the crimp on it over to the input terminals of my MOSFET here 
and I'm going to cut this so that I have just enough cable to go from the power supply to here so I don't have excess wire laying around. Since I have to move this printer around quite a bit, I'm going to just do the wire routing and then we'll come right back. So as you can see here, I have my new power cables fitted to a spare voltage output on my power supply. Most power supplies have extras. These are the two that go to my board currently, and these are the two new ones I'm going to run to the MOSFET. You do need to pay attention to polarity. This side is labeled V plus on the shroud here, and this side is labeled V negative. That's what you want to use. You do not want to use these, which are going to your AC outlet. So if you see ones that say L, N, and then a little earth sign, these are your AC, do not use these. Use the V plus and the V minus. So I've trimmed these to the correct length. I took off a little bit off the stock harness just because I don't want a ton of excess. Now I'm going to strip back the wire. You only need about eight millimeters or so. And then again, twist because you want the end all nice. You don't want it fanned out. And I'm going to loosen up the screw terminals like we did before. And this is very critical to get positive and negative correct. So this one is positive and this one's negative. You can see the little plus where it says power. That's where our red one's gonna go, which is connected to V plus on our power supply. You wanna make sure when you insert your wires, you don't see any wires sticking out, it's just insulation. If you see any wires sticking out, then you strip too far and you're going to need to trim it. This is what you wanna see. So go ahead and tighten that down and repeat for the negative. And that's it, we're done. So now I have my new power run going to the MOSFET, the existing bed wires going to the output, and this is connected to my printer board. This is going to take all the load from the bed off of your MOSFET that's on your control board, which means there's less chance of your control board failing or terminal burning up on there because this is designed to handle the higher amps. I'd be really surprised if anybody's able to burn these up when using these for the 30 amp rating that we advertise. These are very overkill MOSFETs. Now for this particular case I printed, this just has a little thing that goes over the top. And it snaps on to give it a cleaner look. There are links to this case on the product page for our MOSFET and also a basic spacer that you can print out, but there are multiple mounting options for this MOSFET. There's no current going over these wires. This is just strictly for a control to tell this one to turn on. So I'll go ahead and plug this in and show you guys with it heating up. So I have the printer on here. I'm going to tell it to preheat. And what you'll see here on the side is the little red light on the MOSFET kicks on. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like when it turns off. So I'm going to repair, cool down, and now you can see it turns off. It functions just like your original MOSFET, except all the current is going through this instead of your printer's control board. So there you go, you can see I kicked it on, and now I don't have to worry about all the current from my bed going through this board. I wanted to note that if you are replacing Creality stock MOSFET that has only three wires going to it, we have the voltage in positive, voltage in negative, and then V out, which is the negative going to the bed. If you're replacing the Creality MOSFET, you do not need to run the positive wire to the plus hotbed side connection here. It can go directly to your power supply. And that's because these two center pins here on this MOSFET are directly connected together on the PCB. So it doesn't matter if the bed gets its other connection from here or from your power supply. I just wanted to point this out because this makes replacing the Creality MOSFET with ours much easier. And you can even use the factory input cable with our MOSFET connected to the B-CTL plug here. Now you know how to add a MOSFET to your 3D printer to take the load off your control board for your heated bed. This is a really good idea no matter what board you have in your printer because at the end of the day, it's taking that large load off of your printer. And on your 3D printer, the heated bed is the largest source of current in terms of power draw on your printer. And the best part is if anything should happen, instead of having to replace your control board, you're having to replace a $10 part instead of a $50 or $100 control board. If you don't happen to have some spare wire laying around, we actually carry a set of wires that are intended for the Ender 3 in our shop that are just 12 gauge wires, one meter each, red and black color, with pre-crimped ends on them that'll fit your power supply. So if you also wanna pick up those along with the MOSFET, I put links in the video description for the MOSFET and the wire set. So I hope this video was helpful and informative and as always, happy printing. Thanks for watching.